Britain's in a baby boom, with a difference. Record numbers of parents are expecting twins and triplets. Somebody we know said, wow, you have three humans in your stomach right now. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, I have. <laughs> it is unbelievable. I'm, it's just maybe 45 minutes out of your family of five. <laughs> Congratulations. I must not forget the next one, yeah? No, don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> but these pregnancies are far from easy. You will finish things. OK. Oh, sorry. Multiple pregnancies are very much a blessing and a curse. So my job is about guiding parents through a very difficult journey. <laughs> Specialist medical teams must give nature a helping hand. The human race was not designed to carry three babies. Oh. Leading up to the scan, we're so nervous. There is a real problem there and I don't yet know what that means. And at the end of it all, an even bigger hurdle lies in store. I thought it will be easy. <laughs> so we're going to put the third one. Um, you do suddenly go, oh my God, how the hell are we going to do that? Melanie, and she's 20 weeks pregnant with triplets. She lives in Paynton in Devon with her husband Martin and her 12-year-old daughter Tia. Pregnant ladies first, I suppose. Hopefully that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> we conceive naturally to find out there's Three babies through a natural conception is, is... Surprising, to say yeah. the least. You know, from day one when I first met you, I, I said I don't really want any more kids. Because I had Tia, um, I had the experience of a couple of years of bringing a child of my own, and, and it did scare me to do it again. But I trust him, and I feel safe with him. I've always wanted at least, well, you know, one, one child. Yeah. So he talked me into it, and I said, OK, well, we'll have one. <laughs> and then there was three. triplets need scans far more regularly than normal pregnancies. At just 20 weeks, Melanie and Martin are about to have their fourth scan. A triplet pregnancy is one of the riskiest, most unpredictable pregnancies a woman and the babies can undertake. Most of the time, the babies and the mum will come through fine, but they need a lot of extra care and attention to get to that end. I feel like they're up in my ribs. One of the questions perhaps particularly dads ask is how can a woman fit in three babies into her abdomen? And it's with great difficulty. The uterus for a triplet pregnancy feels as if um, it's the equivalent of a single baby, probably about, about halfway through the pregnancy. The pressure for space and nutrients means triplets can start to develop unequally. One of Melanie's is growing more slowly than the other two. This baby over on the left. A bit more complicated. Yeah, it's the one that we seem to have most worry about. Since around 16 weeks, it's been showing that this baby is two weeks behind. But steady, two weeks behind. Yeah. Just want to get in, want to get them checked, and then I can relax. Tick one, two, three, done. Every scan that we've had, we've always been concerned about the little triplet three. And I know that it's exciting for them having a scan, it's lovely to see the babies, but both of them hide it very well, but they are probably petrified as they come in. So make yourself as comfortable as you can be, given the circumstances. Just let me know if your back starts to seize up and give you a cushion. So you're 20 weeks. Just over, tomorrow, is it? just over yeah. 20 weeks. And how are you keeping? Yeah, I'm OK. What about normal symptoms, backache, feeling sick? No, it's, it's quite eased off Good. a fair bit this, this last week. Excellent. So first thing, as always, I'll just heartbeats. check the heartbeats for you. 
There's a heartbeat there. Right. There's number two's heartbeat going there. Number three I worry about. I know, so let's go to number three. I can feel him Good. fighting. And there's a heartbeat there. There. Okay. important there. Right, yeah. It is. Yeah. I don't know, it's a bit mesmerising really, isn't it? I'm not really too sure what I'm looking at, but I like looking at it. Let's go over to number three and get some measurements. Next, they check the size of the smallest triplet. Its progress is slow, but steady. OK, so I'm still on number three. But it's femur bones, if that measure OK? It, it's small but grown. So yeah, it's still again, grown in line with the... Absolutely. So still is only two weeks behind, isn't it? Yeah, so it has grown appropriately, that's our term, isn't it? Yeah. Melanie and Martin already know they're having two girls, but today they hope to find out the sex of the third baby. So if it's three girls here, you'll be building yourself a shed, won't you, Martin? No. To escape yeah. to. Yeah. I'll be building myself a shed, he'll be always. <laughs> he doesn't have to deal with the hormones when they reach like 12 and 13. Ah. Oh. Triple lines. There. Just in there, can you see all those lines? Yeah. So it looks like number three is a girl as well. At least it makes bedrooms easier. I was just about to say that. So... Yeah. Moods might be more difficult, but bedrooms yeah. you can sort out. I feel so much more relieved. Just, I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't care about anything else, just that they're alive. A little heartbeat, that's all I care. It's always nice when they come out, isn't it? Yeah. I just feel, like, so relieved. <laughs> Every year, around 12,000 sets of twins are born across Britain. In Birmingham, there's a whole team which specialises in multiple births. Yeah, she's due, um, she's in scan at the moment. Antoinette is one of the midwives. The number of twins has doubled in the last 30 years and nobody knows exactly why. Okay. They are high risk, um, involve a lot more care and attention, a lot more clinic appointments. It is stressful caring for them, but it's very, very, very rewarding. I mean, there is a quote, isn't there, that somebody said, um, the day you find a job you love is the day you cease to work. And I think that's how I am with Midifrin. Antoinette's about to help deliver a set of twins by emergency caesarean. The mum-to-be, Caroline, is on her way to theatre. Her husband is racing to join them. We've only just been told we're coming down. He has to be here. Caroline's delivery has been brought forward unexpectedly after the growth of one of her twins slowed, and now her blood pressure has shot up. Oh, oh Matt, hello there. Are you all right? Oh, bless you, darling. How are you? How are you? Oh, we're ready to go, goodness. then. We're ready yeah. to go. Yep. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Tell you what, Matt, you're just going to carry on coming down to recovery with us. Yeah. Stick that on, come down. Me. Okay, bring the bags and everything. All right, um, we'll, going, yeah. What I'll do is I'll just you take Caroline in quickly. Yeah. And then you can be organising the bags and recovery and that, and I'll come and bring you okay. straight in. Yeah. Doctors always aim to deliver twins early, at around 37 weeks. But Caroline is a week and a half earlier than that. High blood pressure, like in Caroline's situation at the moment, is much more common in mums having twins. It's not a big concern, it just means the babies are simply going to come a little bit early. You alright? You okay? Mm. I'm trying not to get emotional before it <laughs> Matt and Caroline have been married three years, and these twins will be their first children. And we planned to have a baby um, at some point soon, and then the extra surprise came that it was two. For me, it was information overload. I was amazed there was a baby there, because it all happened so quickly, but then to know there was two, I instantly knew my life had just changed massively. Uh, but I still don't think it's sunk in now, to be honest, that I've got two on the way. 
Matt and Caroline are used to the operating theatre, but not as patients. Both of them are doctors. A little bit difficult for me because I've helped with those operations. I'll know when, they, when they're about to cut me open. I'll know what everything means. I'll know that they're about to tear my abdominal muscles apart. You know, it's going to be very graphic in my head. I think that will make it much more frightening. It's a bit trippy knowing what's happening. Mm -hmm. So you understand what no, we're going no, to do no, then? No. Once you're comfortable, uh, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll get babies delivered. When we deliver babies, we'll lift them up over here, OK? They'll still be connected to the umbilical cord at that time and they'll still get their oxygen from there. So don't worry if they don't cry. Yeah. It's quite normal for babies not to cry. Yeah. Any questions or anything? Yeah. Let's go. Hmm. I did the explanation of what happens at a section at our MCT. Still connected. Is that a she? Is she? Sorry, yes, yeah, she's yeah. a girl. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is surreal. around three and four pounds each. Both twins are about half the size of a normal newborn. Oh my God, <laughs> how did we do this? I don't know. But doctors notice their daughter, Arabella, isn't breathing properly. She's a little bit moaning, it's just a sign she's trying to help with her breathing. Probably because she wasn't as ready as him to come out, she's been stressed. Can I borrow yeah, of a pepper? He's all perfect and he's weed all over. Should it come in the second for a short time? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Their daughter is taken to intensive care. I've gone down with a little bit and I said, yeah. Okay, see you in a few minutes, Matt. Okay. Just because I'm a doctor and I look after adults, I, I literally know nothing about children's medicine. When it became apparent she needed to stay on intensive care, it just become, I don't know, becomes a whirlwind really. You can't get your head around it. Because they're twins, what normally happens if they're a little bit little, so one, their lungs aren't quite developed enough, and so that obviously they can't breathe properly with that. At the moment, she's struggling to breathe just by herself. So as you can hear, she's still grunting a little bit. That's her just trying to keep her lungs inflated. You have to put your trust in people that are looking after them, um, and that's the only way you 
you get through it really, thinking it's going to be fine because these guys know what they're doing. In Birmingham, it's been half an hour since Matt and Caroline's twins were born. Their daughter was put on a machine to help her breathing. She's requiring a little bit more oxygen into her lungs at the moment. Breathing problems like this are very common in our twins, particularly because they've been born early. Um, it's not a situation that we're, it's uncommon to us. We're well used to dealing with the problem, but particularly for the parents, it's a very, very anxious time and they need a lot more support. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit crazy. But they're, they're both okay. And they're just... Um, Arabella's the one that's kicking off. And that's pretty busy on there, so they're just kind of running around at the moment. You know they're in a really good place, but you're still a bit really scared. And that's probably the most stressed I, uh, I've been ever, <laughs> I'd say. God, I'm so glad I didn't choose paediatrics as a profession. I just constantly brick myself. <laughs> in Liverpool, Kerry and Sean are expecting their second set of twins. They are already parents to Olivia, aged eight, and their first set of twins, Amelia and Sean, who are six. Chances of having two sets of twins are 12,500 to one. Can't win the lottery, can we, no, <laughs> have two sets of twins? Doctors think Kerry might be one of a small number of women who tend to release two eggs when they ovulate, instead of one. And I just saw Sean's face drop when he saw two little babies on the screen. And the one was like, some mustard and about twins. I was like, no, we've got the twins. She's like, no, this is another twin pregnancy. And I cried. <laughs> How many nappies do we have to buy? Well, we've got two babies. It's 360 nappies a month for two babies. It's ridiculous how much nappies we're going to need. It's lots, isn't it? Yes. Lots and lots of nappies. Lots. Thousand nappies. In their first three years of life, Kerry and Sean's twins will get through over 12,000 nappies. That's tall. It is tall, it's isn't it? It's just getting used to the fact that there's going to be seven of us. Yeah. It's a big expense. Another two mouths to feed. Even like sandwiches, it's going to be like... A loaf of bread. A loaf of bread, probably. <laughs> so even doing the pack lunches when they go to school is going to be fun. They are just dirty little babies, aren't they? Yeah. That's amazing. They can't hear what we're saying, can they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been real reverse on her because I'm pregnant with twins again and then it's the two elder girls that are looking after me for a change. You've really helped me out doing every little bit you can. Olivia's even started to master the hoovering of the house and Amelia's dusting, so <laughs> let's hope it continues once these two arrive. Amelia, do you know that we might be in charge of like running the house? Sometimes because mum won't be able to do much and dad's going to be in work, isn't he? Yeah. So, I have to be in charge of, like, helping mum. <gasps> Thank you. It's a bit wobbly. A bit. 
Olivia's being so strict. She she knows, like, I can't eat certain foods, I can't drink so much coffee. You're not supposed to eat tuna, pate, blue cheese. I don't like that anyway. You're not supposed to have too much chocolate, but... <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> you love chocolate. I do like chocolate. Chocoholic. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> At Torbay Hospital in Devon, Martin and Melanie have arrived for yet another scan. You all right? Yeah. Mm. Melanie is now 26 weeks pregnant. Her triplets are reaching the point where they could survive in the outside world. But the smallest triplet's lack of development has been a constant worry. Yeah. Man, tell me up. Just... And there's one right there poofing out. <laughs> Just let me know if your back's aching, if you need yeah. to change position at any stage, because I know we're here for a long time, so if you need to get up and walk around, go and do a wee while you're doing that, great. I know you do usually, but can we check the little one first? Yes, of course. I yeah. know you do usually anyway, but... I'm just going to pop the light down a little bit to do yeah. that, so I can see properly. Fantastic. So it's really encouraging to see that this baby's moving. That's not only really is there a heartbeat, yeah. but we've actually had some growth. So we've had two bits of really good news. That's good, isn't it? It is good. You happy? Yeah. A bit of nice news. It looks pretty good. Do they know each other's in there? Do they? Are they aware of each other's? They're very aware of each other. Um, and in fact, studies of babies on special care have shown that when twins are separated, maybe one's well and the other's poorly, that the heart rates go up. And if you put them back in the cot together, then their heart rates go down. OK. Last thing. Head. Head. Yeah, that I didn't really get a good view of the brain structures for this baby before. So I just wanted to do those again. Melanie, the reason why I've taken so long with the baby's head is that I think there's a problem okay. within the head. OK. Um, and I've been desperately trying to make sure it's not just because I'm seeing it from an awkward angle, and I yeah. don't think I am. What I'm seeing here, there's fluid in the brain here, these black areas, and that those areas are meant to be there, but they're meant to be much smaller. Yeah. That may represent a baby who then isn't able to breathe by itself when it comes out, or if it's an abnormality that's only just shown itself, then that may have an impact on the baby's ability to move and breathe. Okay. I don't know what this means for you, and I, I don't know how much anybody else is going to be able to tell you that, but it is more of a problem than just being small now. Yeah, OK. So I have to believe that there is a real problem there, and I don't yet know what that means. OK. <laughs> Let's, let's get you up off here, OK? Move, move on. Move. What I found with triplet three 
is um, a significant abnormality of the outside of the brain. What I'm not able to say to Melanie and Martin is what implication that has for the baby's survival in the womb or its outcome afterwards. Unfortunately, I think it's sufficient that it's not going to go away. In Birmingham, Caroline has been recovering in hospital from her caesarean section. Her premature twins are being nursed in separate neonatal wards. Hello! Hi, yeah, I brought mummy to see the babies. Her daughter, Arabella, is still in intensive care, but growing stronger. Um, so what we've done since she's been here, we've popped her under phototherapy because she's slightly jaundiced, which is very common in babies. Um, and we've popped her onto a machine that gives her a little bit of pressure to open up the lungs. She was in oxygen initially, but we've reduced it right down to air, so she's doing really, really well. Um, we're just going to keep an eye on her blood gases and things and see, and see if we need to alter anything, but she's doing really well. We saw Arabella first. It was just, just like massive relief that everything was, you know, okay. Um, she was small, but she was okay in the general sense. Oh, he's doing so well. <laughs> Matt and Caroline's son, Max, is being kept on a less intensive care regime. Oh, look who's come to see you. So being able to hold my little boy um, was amazing. He's tiny, but he just looked like really perfect, teeny weeny, but perfectly formed. So he's got all these little features just, <laughs> just there. In Liverpool, it's the day before Kerry's twins are due. And because of their position in the womb, she'll have to have a C-section. Are you worried about mum tomorrow? Yeah. I am, cos I think she's a bit scared. Amelia, do you know what a caesarean is? Yeah, they cut up your belly. Well, they don't actually cut it up. They have, they have to cut half of that and you have to get a needle in your back. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> How are they going to cut mummy's belly open? Well, I'm not really sure. With a sword or what? <laughs> I don't think it's a sword. I think it's like a blade when they cut it under there. Liv, does it hurt to have a seal? I'm not sure. What do you think? I don't know. I'm not a genius. Do you think it's quite a serious operation? Yeah. Okay. Because when you get your stitches, you can't do that much in case you... If they break your stitches, you'll have to go and do everything all again. Well, not have the twins again, but... Because you can't have them again. <laughs> it feels strange tomorrow because right. Mum's having the babies. I know, it will feel strange because when on Friday, she might come home on Friday or Thursday and she'll bring two new babies home. Mm. 
It's the following day, and the girls' parents, Kerry and Sean, are waiting to be called for a C-section. <coughs> Kerry has reached week 37, the ideal time for twins to be delivered. Stress. Never had a major operation before. I had my tonsils out when I was younger, that was it, but nothing to this extreme. I think you're absolutely gutter that you can't uh, have these naturally, mm -hmm. I think. I had Olivia in the house and it was just such a lovely experience. I had the first set of twins naturally and it's just because these two are going head down or moving that I've got to have a section because it's the safest option for them. You can always laugh at me when I've had the, uh, the out snip, can't you? Mm. Yeah, but I can't come in and watch like you're going to come and watch this, can I? No, I'm only watching the top half. <laughs> I don't want to go down a business end. No, no, not this time. No. Don't need to see your lower intestine, do they? Flat on your back as you can, that's a ribbony bottom three. Okay? Yeah. Just put your hands on your chest. Table. As slow as it. Okay. Location. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, That's the first drink. <laughs> 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 Very loud, right? What was that? First one. first. Ten forty for your time of day. Wonderful. Absolutely fine. All of it. I'm going to get a more closer to the Their second baby doesn't make a sound when she's born. She's completely healthy, but her lungs are still adjusting to her sudden exit from the womb. Is she all right? Is she okay? Congratulations. Is she okay? She's all right. I'm just going to take her over. They are noisier than the last two, aren't they? Damn sight noisier than the last two. Yeah, but I think it's a little bit Do you want to do the two-arm thing? I can do the two-arm thing. Yeah? We've done that before. <laughs> Let me see Don't drop him. I'm not going to drop him. It's lovely to know you can make something so perfect. <laughs> In Devon, it's been just over a week since Melanie and Martin's last scan, when they discovered their smallest triplet's brain wasn't developing properly. 
it sends that scan. Even though I did kind of close myself off and I did get quite low, Martin, Martin's always been great at looking at the positives. It did take him a few days to kind of get me round to thinking more positively. Just oh, kicking. yeah, just got a big and, kick and then, yeah. yeah. No, I don't feel there's any point worrying about something that you're not too sure of. You just have to deal with it when it happens, but, you know, there's a chance you could be perfectly fine, so that's the way I'm going to think until otherwise. You know, sometimes you just have to get on with it. Because you can't change it by worrying, so I don't see the point in worrying. And I'm not going to say it didn't upset me, but it's not something you can let take over. The more I worry about it now, the more I could damage all of them or I could, you know, put myself through a lot of stress. And, you know, it affects me and it affects mine and then it affects Tia. The more I can just try and relax and enjoy the pregnancy, you know, hopefully the easier it'll go and we'll face the outcome when we get there. I'm ready. And I want the babies to be as ready as they can be. You know, if they told me next week that at the scan, you know, they need to be in there another two weeks, then I'd accept that. If they said they're about as big as they're going to get, then I will start eating curry like no tomorrow. <laughs> Having loads of sex. Not with Martin, but... <laughs> It's been eight hours since Kerry's operation, and the family's come to be reunited. Oh, I can't wait to see more. Hey. I told you both. <laughs> both twins are doing so well that Kerry can look after them herself. Should be happy. Go and see your brother and sister. Go and see your brother and sister. That's Isla and that's Kira. What do you think? <laughs> They'll be happy to you. Melanie's water's broke in the middle of the night and we pretty much rushed straight to the hospital. Before we really knew it, they were rushing her off for emergency caesarean. As Melanie was under a general anaesthetic, Martin was kept out of the operating theatre. And you want to be there to help her. But I wasn't allowed. There was a lot of worry in that time not quite knowing what was going on, because no one really saying anything. Just waiting. The moment they first wheeled past Bo and Mika, you know, I was overwhelmed, I was happy. I couldn't believe how beautiful they were. 
but obviously there was still a bit of worry waiting for Melanie and Hope to arrive. And not so long after they wheeled Hope past, and again it was just amazing to see her as well. They all spit an image of Martin, the same chin, the same nose. When I said to him earlier, look at their chin, Martin was like, yeah, they've all got that same chin. He, went, he said, they haven't got a round head like you, have they? Melanie and Martin's triplets are six weeks premature. Hope is immediately taken for surgery, but the other two triplets are fit and healthy. Oh, my mint to look at you, am I? I mean, mm -hmm. you fit your bum, just want to eat. You just want to listen, don't you? You just want to know what's going on. And you just want to eat everything and fit you. It'd be nice when I got all three of them on here. I'll find a way. I'll find a way of squidging you all together. You squidged in my belly, didn't you? So we squidge you on here. And when we all get to go home, we'll all get in bed, me, Dad, Tia, the three babies. And we'll all just cuddle up and talk to each other. Mm. Hope's operation went well. Doctors have drained fluid from her skull, so her brain can start to develop properly. It's not too bad. Oh, yay! Are <laughs> well, you having nice dreams? You're having nice dreams. You're going to show me your beautiful eyes. After five weeks in hospital, Max and Arabella have been given the all clear, and Matt and Caroline can finally take them home. Oh my word, we're not going anywhere fast in the next few years, are we? I think we'd always had in our mind that as soon as we knew they were going to have twins, we knew it wasn't going to be a straightforward journey. I don't think I quite envisaged having five weeks in hospital. But now, even though they're a little bit small, doing really well and, and doing what normal babies do, really, is cool. It's exciting, it's the start of your life's big adventure, isn't it, now? Do you feel like you feel more grown up now? Yeah. <laughs> I feel we have to be more grown up, whether I actually feel grown up or not, I don't know. I do sometimes feel like you're on the outside looking in there. Because like when you get married you think, wow, we're married now. But we never we feel really young, don't we? Let's go, Miss Eva. Let's go see the house. Look we. I don't think I'd have wanted our kids any younger. Um, because the last few weeks would have I'd been like a rabbit in headlights. Um, but yeah, definitely. Definitely got more responsibilities now. Welcome home. What's that thing? Ah. I can now understand why fathers walk around looking a bit unfashionable and wearing dodgy jumpers and dodgy shirts because the fact that they've managed to get their kids dressed 
is the biggest challenge of the day. <laughs> and then they probably just throw in anything. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware that I'm fourth in the pecking order now in the household. <laughs> I think someone's about to get hiccups. Now that we're a family of seven, it's hectic, noisy, yeah, stressful, cluttered, cluttered, yeah, untidy. Yeah. Very untidy. <laughs> Olivia's responding really well to having them, isn't she? She's like a little mother yeah, hen. Yeah, mother hen, yeah. Yeah, she helps bath them, feed them. She'll go and make you bottles. She's even done a few dirty nappies, hasn't she? Yeah. As long yeah. as they're not too extreme, then she'll do it. <coughs> because we've had two sets of twins, a professor told us if we have any more, then it will be twins. I must admit, I am a bit curious to find out if we did a tiny bit curious to find out if it will be twins, but no. No. No more McGinty's. No. Definitely gone. <laughs> 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 Hello, I've booked in for the sniff now. The date's been made, hasn't it? Yeah. DJ will arrive. <laughs> Or do we keep going until it's finally triplets? <laughs> no. <laughs> in Devon, Hope is still in hospital, but due home any day. Her two sisters, Mika and Bo, have been home for a fortnight. Being parents to triplets, it, uh, I don't think we've got to experience the full uh, we haven't. Full force of it as of yet. We're still waiting for Hope to come home. There's a chance there that she could have completely nothing wrong with her, or a chance that she could have a fair few le learning difficulties, but that's, that's much better than her not being here at all. It's just brilliant that we have got her and that she is coming home. I'm definitely proud to be a triplet dad. Looking at all three of them, like, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm just looking forward to teaching them. Teaching them, spending time with them. I don't know, it's, it's new and it? it's new to me. It's mad, isn't it, that you look at them and, and you can't believe how much you love three tiny new people that you've only really just met. I'm definitely glad that I persuaded Lily to have a baby. I don't. I think I'd be persuading her to have another one. 